Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. I'm excited, man. This is probably the most excited I've been making a video since I made my Jamar Chase video. Say Surratt is probably my second favorite receiver. I'm not saying he's the, he's the second best receiver in this draft at all, but he's probably my second favorite receiver to watch out of this draft class. And I see a couple of weeks ago, maybe, a, maybe about a month and a half ago, he was projected to go in the second or third round. Now I'm seeing him go as late as the fifth to sixth round. That's ridiculous to me. This dude is uncoverable. Now, he does not have all of the physical tools, like the physical speed and all of that stuff. The 40 times are, are irrelevant to me. Daniel Jones ran a 4.8, and he's running 20 miles per hour in the league. So, say Surratt ran a 4.6940, which is atrocious for a receiver. It's not good. But on the field, I would say he's probably a 4.5, 8, 4.5, something like that. He's, he's a 4.5 he's a guy. He's not fast. He's not really a fast guy. But he's not atrociously so, like a 4'6'9", not at all. But say Surratt, he's someone that you cannot guard one-on-one. -on -one. You, you'll just see it time and time. He's so great at locating the football in the air. He's so great at body position. And for my comp, my comp for say Surratt is Jordy Nelson. I think that's the perfect comp for say Surratt. I don't remember much of Jordy Nelson in college. But I know in Jordy Nelson and his prime, he was never, you know, he was fast. He was underrated kind of fast. But he was never the the all, all speed guy. He was never going to beat you just with speed. He beat you with body position. He beat you with hands. And he beat you with smarts. And this is what C C Surratt does. It's so, it's so fun to watch. So I'm going to take you through a couple of his plays and show you why I think that he's worth in my opinion, I mean, I have him as worth a second round pick. A, a lot of people will disagree, but anywhere from, from that second round to the fourth round, I think is where his sweet spot is, where he'll probably go in the NFL draft. So, say Surratt is at the top of your screen. Wake Forest, their camera angles are really far off, so it's kind of hard to see people, but he, he gets singled sometimes, and when he gets singled, he usually gets an outside release, and he can do a ton of different things with this outside release. He can, uh, in this particular situation, he's going he's gonna to catch a back shoulder right around here. Sometimes he can just run past the defender, which is why I say he's not a 4-6-9 guy. Uh, and sometimes, you know, he, he can turn it into a bunch of different things. And I, I just like the versatility of his game. This particular time, you're going to see that he does not get safety help over the top of him. His quarterback has the green light when looking towards Surratt. And it, it just, I'm just going to have to show you all. He's a guy who's always going to come down with the football. He's about 6'2", 210. So he's a big body dude and he knows how to use his body. So let's watch this first play. He's going to spring out of his stance and get square. Uh, this is something that a lot of receivers are going to do. You have perfect balance. They don't know which way you're going to go once you square up here. You're choosing which way you're going to go. Reading the defender, he sees the defender is playing inside on him. The defender is kind of anticipating that he's going to take this route inside. He doesn't. He gets outside. And at this point, this is enough space for a guy like Say Surratt. He's going to get that outside, and the ball is going to be put perfectly on his back shoulder. And he comes down with it. Now, it's kind of hard to see from this angle because the Wake Forest all 22 camera angles are really far away. But he turns his body and he comes down with this catch. And he does this routinely. This isn't a, a one-off. He does this routinely. He knows how to use his body. He knows where to be. Now, here you have Surratt again singled up. <laughs> it, it, it makes no sense that these teams continue to play single coverage on him. He's going to just take this as... He has, he's a threat to hit that fade route. He's a threat to, to take this inside. He has a, a number of ways that he can beat people. But this is just another example of if you have a big body and you know how to use your body and you understand, you know, a lot of people don't understand the game. Say Sherrod understands exactly what he needs to do, where he needs to be, and he's got great hands. So he's just going to take this vertical and at this point, 
it just becomes a jump ball, and he's coming down with it. It, it becomes a jump ball, and this guy is too little. It just becomes a game of strength, and more often than not, even in the NFL, say Surratt is going to be able to body these people. It's not much for him <laughs> for him to be able to just body guys. And the corner is giving him inside leverage. This corner is playing this fade perfectly. Corner's playing the fade perfectly. He's not beating him over the top. But if he doesn't beat you over the top, which sometimes he does, but on the times that he doesn't beat you over the top, it can just be put on his back shoulder and, and you get beat either, either way. So on this play, he's against not Asante Samuel. <laughs> it's funny. He's got Stanford Samuel on him, not Asante Samuel. But um, he's going to use his initial spring step as momentum. And once he's got that momentum, he turns this into a rocker step, is able to get outside. And you just, just watch this little move. Once this turns physical, he won the game. He, he, he won this match, this one matchup. He won it. He's able to just get him on his hip. At this point, it's physical. Gets him on his hip. Corners off balance. And at this point, you can just go up and snag the ball. You can just go up and snag it. He's got the, the size advantage. He's got the, the, the strength advantage. And he just knows where to go get the football. So he just kind of turns this into a, a spring step, a little stutter. I, I like to see him, you know, kind of, you know, immediately get into his route instead of stuttering. But that's fine. It worked out for him. A little bit of a stutter. And then a one-two outside swim move. You know, essentially what you see a pass rusher do, one, two, swim move with his hands to get his hands off of him. Not like it, it even mattered. He gets his hands on him, but he realizes that this dude's body's a little bit bigger than him. So he's out of position at this point. And he can just go up and get the football. So here is, say, Sherratt right here. And every once in a while, I just like to include just, I just like to include blocks in some of these receiver sessions. And Sherratt, at this point, I'm just going to play this. Just just watch him go and engage with this guy and put him on his butt. This is exactly what I like to see. I, I love to see guys blocking. I really love it. This is just a little bit of intermission. We're going to get back to the routes, but just watch how he just levels this dude. Because, I mean, this is what you get when you get a big receiver. I mean, he's what? Like I said, it's about 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 and about 210 pounds. So he's a big dude. So on this play, you just got a regular red zone play. The defense... All of the linebackers, almost like Madden, they all commit. Everyone commits to the run play. I mean, you got everybody attacking. The quarterback is going to run a little play action right here with the running back. That sucks all of the linebackers down to the line of scrimmage. And Sage Sherrod is right here at the bottom of your screen. He's going to take this vertical, really sell that he might run that fade, and then cut right back inside. The referee is going to try his best <laughs> to make sure he doesn't catch this ball, but he still comes down with it. So let's check this out here. You're going to see him physical. The corner is trying to get physical with him, which, I mean, you kind of have to in these short areas. But he's able to kind of use his, his speed and, and kind of able to use his strength to just almost get, it, get him off of him. Takes this vertical, and then watch how quick he's able to turn his hips. Which is, he doesn't have that, you know, raw explosion that some little guys have and, and some other guys in this draft have. But he does have that ability to really change direction in a hurry. And he's able to just flip his hips. And right there, he's got separation right there. He's wide open. Especially in the NFL, this ball could be put on him right there. But he just gets this football right here. No problem catching it in the traffic. And for this play, just like how a lot of teams and in and, and college underestimated say Sherrod speed, I, I think that's going to happen in the NFL. I really do. Because... He's a guy who he will get over top of the, the DB if you leave him one-on-one. -on -one. You can't leave this dude one-on-one. -on -one. And he played against a lot of corners that have some speed. So it's not like he's just going against high school guys. He played against some guys with speed. He knows exactly. I mean, I keep ho hovering, hovering back to this. He knows exactly where to go, where to position his body, when to make certain moves. So that way he gets open and he's open deep a ton because they continue to leave one guy on them. They think that this corner is just going to be able to run with them, and it just doesn't work out for them. Say Surratt is right here at the bottom of your screen. He's going to run kind of a, a, a comeback and go, a hitch and go kind of route. 
doesn't completely turn around. Let's just watch it here. He's going to take this vertical. As soon as, you know, this corner is kind of just shading with him, he's not really trying to make any contact because if you got a guy this big in front of you <laughs> and you know that you probably can't win this press against him, you don't want to be in a situation where he just basically bowls you over and he's running for 40 yards uncontested. Corner does a good job of just shadowing him right here. And at this point, he feels, I can turn and run with this guy. But as soon as he decides, say Surratt decides to turn around to pretend that he's going to run this hitch route, the corner tries to make contact, misses the contact, and the separation ensues right here. Separation ensues. Surratt is down the sideline, and good luck tackling him as he just takes this into the end zone. I mean, it's just poetry in motion. You always love a good comeback route because it can get a slower receiver open against a faster corner. Against, I mean, with fast receivers, it, it could really destroy some corners. So anybody that can run this route at a high level, which I think he probably can on the next level, there's going to be a threat. And it just shows you that he can be a threat down the field. I mean, if he's running a 4-6-9, he's, he's, not, he's not able to get this much separation here. So this play right here is just really horrible defense. They're going to basically have these corners and, and shuffle techniques. And this is a sluggo, and it's, it's designed to, to really beat man coverage. If this corner takes this sluggo and he bites on this sluggo, then there's nothing but space and opportunity all, all the way over here. So that's what they really designed this play for. But this is zone all the way. And the zone is so loose and so bad of a zone. I mean, he's able to use his brain and be smart along with this quarterback to just sit in that zone and just take the, the easy yards, the free yards. So you're just going to see him run this sluggo, which I think he does a, a pretty good job of running. I mean, I would want him to sell it a little bit more, but maybe if he does sell it more, you know, he gets him to really bite down, but he's already got him out of position and kind of in his blind spot right here. And he kind of sags back so he can recover. He turns completely. So at this point, you're in his blind spot, and say Surratt makes a big brain, smart player move, and he just sits there and just says, you don't want to look at me. You, you can't cover me. If, you, if you're not looking at me, there's no way you can be covering me. So he's just there, able to sit there in that zone, get this, get his feet down, and get some yak. And this way, he's, he, he, he finds this poor safety and stiff arms him to the ground. And, you know, that's the way, that's the way you give up a, what, 30, 40-yard play by playing a little bit too far off. And I would consider this another beautiful play right here. This is man across the board. Nothing special here. But say Surratt is just going to run this out route right here. And he kind of gets help from the other DB. Kind of designed as maybe a possible pick route. He gets that help, but he's also able to run a, a really nice route. And a lot of people get things confused. Sometimes they'll use a rocker step. Sometimes a receiver will use a rocker step which is what I showed you he did earlier earlier in this video, which is essentially just the Euro step. Sometimes a receiver will use that at the top of their route every single time. And people confuse that with, if you're not using that step, you're not a good route runner. Say Surratt, he, he uses that sometimes. You'll see him and Jalen Waddle and sometimes Devontae Smith just turn. He just turns so quickly, so smoothly, and it's a flat line, a flat turn. He just gets to the top of his route and just turns. And he's open. And he's completely open. And his, his quarterback isn't able to put it right on him. But he gives him a chance. And he just goes up, elevates, gets both feet down. So on this play, you're going to see him run another hitch and go. And he actually gets the DB off balance and tries to take this outside. He's actually getting fouled on this play if you really look at what's going on. It's actually really getting fouled, but he tries to take this outside. Doesn't really work out because he's being fouled. As you see, watch, he's going to run this hitch, right, hitch and go. The corner is already kind of breaking on the football. He's off balance. And to get back in the picture, because say Surratt is going to leave him right here, and this is going to be a touchdown, he's going to make contact with him down the field to get back in the picture. So he's back in the picture. No problem. No flags thrown. But look at say Surratt be able to use his head and say, Okay, you want to just stack over the top of me? I'll just box you out, turn this into a catch. And, and he just does this so much. It just shows the times where he can't stack these defenders, 
he's able to just turn around and just, you know, I'm going to use my body and just be this big target and just still get these yards anyway. All right. So I've made my case for Sage Surratt. He's someone, that, again, that I would take if I was an NFL GM in the second round. Now, do I think that he'll go in the second round? I don't just because he doesn't have all of those physical tools. But he's going to be someone that probably goes in the third or fourth round, but probably the fourth round because of the physical tools again. He's probably going to go in the fourth round, and he's going to be that guy that makes play after play after play. That's not a super athlete. Again, like a Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson was not a super athlete, and he continuously made those plays. He was pretty fast. I would say Jordy Nelson was definitely faster than him, but he wasn't the fastest. And he consistently made those back shoulder, smart, you know, big brain, you know, level headed veteran kind of plays. And Sage Surratt is such a natural to the receiver position. I would want him on my football team no matter what team I was on because he's going to be a guy that's going to be in the right spot, that knows exactly what to do to get open, that knows what to do to catch the ball. He's not going to be a guy who's going to be dropping the football all over the place. Say Surratt is probably, again, my second favorite receiver to watch in this entire draft. So you guys let me know what you think of him. Do you want him on your team? Let me know. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell. And listen, I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know. And have a good one.